What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Get Jabby. I'm Achara Kirk, joined by Steph, Super Sabra. What up? Andrew, Flash Gordon. How's it going? And we are checking out the classic Guy Ritchie movie, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. I am super excited. Now, full disclosure, I have seen this movie. I've seen this multiple times, but it's been a long time since I have watched it. And these two, for whatever reason, have never seen this movie before. So I am so excited to be watching this with them. If you guys want to watch the entire movie without any cuts or interruptions along with us, you can do that on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Jabby Kawai. You can also do that on YouTube memberships right here. So yeah, come join us. There's lots of great content on there. Other classic movies like our reaction to Alien and Aliens. Oh, yeah. Epic. Those were great. Oh, you watched it? I did. You guys Hell were awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, you know, for the endorsement. So yeah, if you guys want to watch some movies and shows alongside us, then consider joining our Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, if you're on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell icon all notifications so you know whenever we drop a new video and upvote this video if you're enjoying what you're watching. All right, let's get into it. And ten pounds. Huh. Hand stolen in Stepney. It's as long as my arm. I wish it was as long as something else. You'll be crying tears as big as October cabbages. Bacon cosmos. Uh oh. Shit. Bacon could see that his days of selling moody goods on street corners are numbered. It's time to move on, and he knows it. That is 900 nicker in any shop you're lucky enough to find one in, and you're complaining about 200. What school of finance did you study? It's sale of the fucking century. In fact, fuck it, Nick, I think I'll keep it. All right, all right, keep your Allens on. Dang, he's just walking around with... Seriously. Not much cash. The skinny one is Tom, and he's the entrepreneur of the bunch. That's my 25 grand. It's all there. Uh. Don't be surprised if it picks up a few tourists en route. Anyway, enough about that. Where's the money? Oi! Keep your fingers out of my soup. He represents the more sensible side of the floor. Wow. It's not easy to take a seat at this card table. The amount of money involved has to be a hundred grand upwards, and there's no shortage of punters. The man who decides whether you can play or not is this man, Harry. Or as some, including himself, like to call him, Hatchet Harry. You got it all? 100 grand. Well, if you got it, you got it. Now, if you don't mind. It was just dildos. <laughs> <laughs> Harry has a colleague, a monster of a man, Barry the Baptist. The Baptist got his name by drowning people for hatchets. Are you gonna fucking fight? No, fight. Are you gonna fucking fight? fight? No. Barry makes sure the administrative side of the business runs harmonious. The boy's got a rare ability. He seems to make cards transparent. He's got All right, down. all right, so we can say he's good. Oh no, he's better than good. He's a fucking liability. Here, hold on. What do you think of these? We're selling hundreds. <laughs> What's it for? Oh, don't play innocent with me, Bazza. Spanking. Now tell me, John, how can you be concentrating on improving this lovely tan, and it is a lovely tan, by the way, when you've got more pressing priorities at hand? Tell Harry. I'll be Mr. Harry. Ouch. I don't suppose there's any chance of you lifting this sunbed up, Chris, is there? <laughs> Oh, no. He's got over a monkey here, and that's just in his wallet. Fucking hell, John. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Lord Appen's Smipe has run out of money, and these little beauties are up for auction. But I'm not paying a quarter of a million quid for them. I don't want to know who you use, as long as they're not complete muppets. And don't tell them what they're worth, Barry. Well. I was an Ant Man too. <laughs> Make sure you bring everything from inside the gun cabinet. There'll be a load of old guns. That's all I want. Everything else outside the cabinet, you can keep. It's yours. Oh, thank you very much. Who are we doing this for? You're doing it for me. It's all you need to know. You know, because you need to know. I see. Call me when you're done. 
Tell her. Fucking over monkeys. Ed has been playing cards since he could lift them up. And he soon discovered that he had a big advantage. It's not that he's good with cards or even good at counting them, especially when it comes to money. Interesting. You must be Eddie, JD's son. You must be Harry. Sorry, didn't know your father. You just might meet him if you carry on like that. Evening, Tanya. Been a while. Bye, Ed. Ah! Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> what? Like how they just reacted like that's totally <laughs> like, normal. Okay. What are you doing? Put that back. Why do you have to rub the guns? Put it back. It's crap anyway. <laughs> I was thinking the same. <laughs> Such a random choice. I know. Of all the things. They can't even afford new furniture. We've got the guns. What's the matter with you? Every time we do a job, you have to go burning people's feet. What's wrong with you? Oh, shit. Oh, no. You want to be more careful, old fella? You very nearly took my man's head clean off with that. You all right, Kenny? Kenny? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's get the Ace Ventura do now. Please. Not now, oh, you fucking bastard. Uh oh. Oh my good God. We'll take you to the cleaners. Twenty grand. Open. Thirty thousand. Back to you already, Eddie. Fifty grand. Eighty grand. Whoa. 100 grand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, fellas, I know. I know you're not in, which means no one cares what you know. 250. What? I don't have enough to continue. We will have to see both your cards. If no one loans Eddie the money to continue, it's a loan or we see both your cards. I will loan you the money. No, I think I'd rather just turn them over. I'm not interested in what you would rather. I want to keep going. Before I loan you this, I expect, if you lose, of course, my money back within a week. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, mm. he's got three. Uh, that trumps his oh. sixes, right? I'm, I'm no good at poker. I don't know. Good luck telling your friends that. Mm-hmm. Boy, feeling a bit poorly. I know your friends are responsible for most of the cash, so I'm going to give you one week to find it. Otherwise, I will take a finger of each of you and your friend's hands for every day that passes without payment. And then when you run out of digits, all right, my son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. Stop fucking about, Tom. And think about what we're gonna do. Now sit down. What's all the fuss about Harry? Why don't we just boycott the payment? Let me tell you about that shit, Harry. Once there was this geezer called Smithy Robinson who worked for Harry. Smithy didn't do a very good job. Harry's lost his rag. Reached out for the nearest thing at hand, which happened to be a 15 inch black rubber. <laughs> He's then proceeded to batter. Or Smithy, a death with it. What a way to go. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Hit me like a hammer to my head. But they were cheating. Yeah, it doesn't matter though, does it? Mr. Churchill said that. I say it's a dog eat dog well. Perhaps not. Perhaps I should take another swing just to make sure. Mm. Give me a five iron, John. Dog. Oof. Wow. <laughs> it's in the fireplace. Just pull it out. It's in the bottom. I think you want to have a look at this. Don't let me down now. Nah. I'm not finished with you yet. Still. 
Oh, gosh. So you know these geezers well? Well enough. I've been buying gear off one of them for a couple of years. So what are they like, then? Puffs. Nothing heavy. Four public schoolboys, soft as shite. They jumped around in front of hippie clothes all day, talking bollocks. They've got a container load of cash in shoeboxes. They're selling class A gear. Don't you think there might be someone sensible involved? There's one still gate as you go in, but they never lock it. What do you mean, never lock it? What they got it there for, then? I must have been there 50 times. It's never locked. They're not suspicious. Hello, boys. Harry. Do you want a drink? Hello, my son. Do you want a lolly? Piss off, you nonce. <laughs> Watch it. We hit them as soon as they come back. We'll be prepared, waiting, and they're armed. What do you mean, armed? Armed with what? Uh, bad breath, colourful language. <laughs> What do you think they're going to be armed with? Guns, you tit. Guns. If you have a better idea how to get £500,000 in the next few days, let us know. A few nights ago, Rory's Roger Iron rusted. So he's gone down the battle cruiser to watch the end of a football game. No one's watching the custard, so he switches the channel over. And he wanders up and turns the lizer over. Now, f off and watch it somewhere else. He then orders an Aristotle of the most ping-pong tiddly in the nuclear sub and switches back to his footer. That's f it, says the geezer. That's f what, says Rory. And he gobs out a mouthful of booze covering fatty. He flicks a flaming match in... Ah. Oh. That makes sense. Okay. His team's won two. Four nil. I thought they were not going to address that. <laughs> you really supposed to look like that? Boy, short stuff. Never mind short stuff. Listen, the next time we do a job like this, we're gonna want more money, buddy. Or we're going back to post offices and cars. Fuck that. Where's the others? Oh, there was a couple of old Amalok muskets the butler was carrying. But they were ours, we sold them. I'm not fucking interested. If you don't want to be counting the fingers, you haven't got, I suggest you get those guns. Quick! Well, they're lacking in criminal credibility, and they? I might get laughed at. How much do you want for these muskets? 700 each. Oh, what's that? A pound for every year they've been about? I know they're antiques, but I ain't paying antique prices. <laughs> he doesn't know. Put them on your head, stupid Christ. Now, these fellas, they're your neighbours. I thought it might be a good idea to disguise ourselves a little. I brought weapons as well. Weapons? What do you mean, weapons? <clears throat> these? <laughs> Doesn't look like they could skin a crocodile. Knives are good because they don't make any noise. And the less noise they make, the more likely we are to use them. Shit them right up. Makes it look like we're serious. Guns for show, knives for a pro. So, is there something we should know about you? <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck are they going? Shift the piano? I thought this was meant to be a robbery. But you and the money are going out the back. If he knows you're here, he'll be all day. I'll just clear this shit up. Oh, gosh. What the fuck is he doing? Come on. I can't wait out here all day. All right, just come in. Settle. Oh, is this going to be the day? This is the day! Got to do business like this now. Can't be too careful these days. I know. Shut it! You say a f***ing word the right ear goes, another one then you left! What are you doing, Blank? What do you think I'm doing? Oh, hang on, what are you doing? <laughs> Unlock the gate! <laughs> That's it, go, go, go! Fucking go! Uh... What the fuck's going on? Just hang on, I've got a keys! Uh... Sit down and pet yourself up. You tight as a fucking air rifle! Oh, shit. Oh. First, oh my god. Open the fucking gate as I'm gonna blow his leg off. I'm losing patience. Hurry up, girls. It's all right, all fucking right. And all your friends. Ooh. Oh. Stumpy. Open the gate. Oh, he's passed out, but I'm surprised blowing his toes off didn't wake him up. I know. I was thinking the same thing. John, get him tied up. Plank was the man. There, in those shoe boxes. Not today. I'm tied up. Bull nod, you're in or something. Check it out. 
Plank, get pull out that van lively. Ah! It's he's a dead man. Well, don't you stand there? You got the bags? Can you fill it all in? I can't get up here, Forrest, in my van. I don't know where you can't. Bollocks to can't. You'll fill it all in if you have to make two trips. You don't mess with that guy. Oh, oh no. wow. I'll be all right. Once I've dealt with that lanky prick, do it quietly. Whoa. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. I'm going to say good night, nurse. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, damn. You're missing, babe. <laughs> I was going to say, with that gun, you should not miss from close range. Oh. oh, damn, okay. Going to war with what? Have you forgotten those guns, you dozy brat? <laughs> Everyone's just so inept. Mm hmm. Shut up and back up! Spin round, big boy. <gasps> Ooh. Keys. I want keys. Now. Do you think this is fucking hide and seek? That one. Search that one. Even when tied up, he's scary. Yeah. Right. I'll see you in the van when you finish with Ansemir. Oh, why would you do that? What? Well, you only saw the back of his head, I, I guess. I know, but... But still. That's a lot still. Wait till you're in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, that wasn't too bad, was it? So stressed. Two cigarettes. <laughs> I've never seen someone do that. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that makes sense. Sharing. All right. I'll knock you out in a minute. Look, you want to knock him out? You knock him out. I fucking hate traffic wars. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So relatable. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so stupid. I don't think you'll like that. You said free five a key, and and you know that's a good price. It was yesterday I said three and a half, and now it's today if I'm not mistaken. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Half price. If he wants to get rid of it quick, he'll have to take it. Now look, I've got a race coming up in a minute, so if you'd just be kind enough to... Yeah, get out of the way, dude. Oh, he's into his TV watch. Ooh, Ooh again! <laughs> and when you strip this place, I want every slag this side of Salon pulled in and tortured badly. I want to know who's responsible for this. Otherwise, I'm going to hold you responsible. They should have killed him. <laughs> He's too vicious. <laughs> no, but the, I agree with you, but they're not murderers. Yeah. yeah. They're idiots. <laughs> that pile takes care of Harry. What's left over? Give me half a chance to count it. What about this gear then, eh? Oh, what? You want to tug on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Can we lock up and get drunk now, please? They did pretty well. They need to pay the money now, though. Yeah. What do you want a medal? I'll shoot <gasps> you in the fucking throat if I don't get my ganja back. The one oh. you shot. You're about to get it back. You think this is a coincidence? This white shite steals my things and thinks that he can sell it back to me. He's got less brains than you, Lenny. The greasy wop shistos pezavengi gamure greek if he's still stupid enough to be on this planet. Smart. You're right. They should have just paid Harry right away. Damn, he would be so blacked out. <laughs> oh, Nick screwed. Mm -hmm. Is this some white joke that black don't get? Because <laughs> I'm not fucking laughing, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a... <laughs> What a fun actor. If you bend the truth, or I think you're bending the truth, I'll kill you. If you forget anything, I'll kill you. In fact, you're going to have to work very hard to stay alive. Now, do you understand everything I've said? Because if you don't, I'll kill you. <laughs> you will love us the next door, fucking neighbors! Now get out there and find them. I'm sick of that fucking sire. Get out of my fucking sight, you little shit! Oh, oh no. no. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> yeah. That's no way to answer the phone. Oh. I want, they want the muskets back. Mm-hmm. Was he gonna... Oh, and no. they're all coming oh, after shit. them. Shit. They're, like, so hungover. Yeah. We're gonna do a proper decoration, Joe. I want the grey skies of London illuminated. Oh, my gosh. I want that ass painted red. Maybe they're gonna kill Plank's crew. Yeah. I think they're definitely gonna come first. Now watch out for these fellas. They've got a bit of an arsenal. And they don't mind using it. And does everyone here know what they've got to do? Mm -hmm. I love how everyone's bald and tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's Except got, like, for the, the main guy. He's got the smallest little gun yeah. too. Well, wrap them guns up. Count the money. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> We've got to get fucking guns or we're dead! I don't even know. Like, it's going back to the correct person anyway. Yeah, but everyone's just like, shoot first, ask later. Whoa. That's why you always lock your car yeah. and you roll up your windows. Clearly, that guy's played GTA. <laughs> He's the one we shot in the neck. Is that right, Mr. Botanical? So they did get the right crew, technically. Yep. Oh, no. Damn. Well, I guess you don't have a boss anymore. Looks like it. But who knows? <gasps> Everybody the opportunity owes him. was there. In my experience, no, but he thinks he's best to take that opportunity if it's there. No, because he went to his apartment. It's like now paid, right? No, I think it was the other guys that he was, because he saw that guy carrying the money and, and that guy. This is dangerous oh shit, Dean. We don't even know who lives there. Listen, I don't care who lives there. All I know is that it's preferable to death by hatchets. Fair enough. Let's go. Didn't even realize the job's done. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about that. I'll bet you do. I've got half a million knickers sitting here, which means some poor sod doesn't. We've been upsetting a few people, boy. Okay. Oh, he was for him, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> What's going to happen? Just back away. Ooh. Oh. Mel Gibson tomahawked him. Fuck are you doing here? What the f are you doing here? Oh my goodness. So are they gonna get the cash after all? <laughs> they just keep walking into corpses. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Take it and run. Oh, no. What happened to Chara? <laughs> we haven't done anything wrong, and we're in the clear. Yeah. Don't screw it up now. Ooh. Oh, my. Man, he's going to mess <laughs> you up now. Is that a child driving or in the front seat? Oh, the child is in the front oh. seat, yeah. Oh, you I touched his son. I think they were both wearing a seatbelt, so they were good. Yikes. Okay. Oh what? no. Cheeky bastard. Of all the cars to hit. 
<laughs> now, this was an embarrassing position for Tom to be in, but Chris had to respect the fact that he was holding what appeared to be a pair of loaded shotguns. And Tom had to respect the fact that they were not loaded. So without anybody losing too much face, and everybody else got arrested. I've got him sitting in the car. I, I was going to sell him back to Nick the Greek, but I'm having a bit of trouble getting hold of him. The only thing connecting us with the case... You really think it's worth taking the risk for £700? Tom, you're a dick. Now, you take those guns and you throw them off a bridge. And throw yourself off while you're at it. <laughs> now... Look, all now, right. Tom! Tom. <laughs> It seemed actually underestimated you. The word you're looking for, gentlemen, is thank you. But you better be waving a white flag, high and clear, so as I can see it. Or be the last little visit you ever make. You understand? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mess with him. He's the juggernaut. There is one more thing. It's been emotional. <laughs> <laughs> this it has. By the way, guys, that was an X-Men 3 reference. Oh. Really? Yeah, when I said he's yeah. the juggernaut. Oh, I thought the emotional part, but yeah, that's funny. The money lending business. What's up? Put your seatbelt on. We're out of here. <laughs> was paced very tightly and it just like again just organically and was very seamless with how they just seemingly intertwined with each other and I just thought it was done so brilliantly. I like that it wasn't predictable because I kept thinking there was going to be a rematch of the poker game like Eddie was going to find out that Harry cheated him and I thought maybe they were going to do that so I'm glad it wasn't really predictable. I also got to say too that Jason Fleming is an actor I've seen in other films. He was in the Stephen Summers uh, 1994 Jungle Book film and then I also saw him in uh, Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg back in 2001 so I haven't seen too many of his films i've seen a couple but he showed a lot of range in this film as as tom i mean the four of them are so good together those other two films i'd seen he uh he played more of well i mean in jungle book he was a villain and then in uh rockstar he played the lead singer that gets fired from the band so i didn't really get to see the range of his acting like i did in this film yeah and he was, i mean all four of them were terrific they had such a good camaraderie and chemistry between the four and you really felt that sense of history between the four of them which i loved jason fleming like i was really impressed with his range as an actor but but this whole film was very well cast. Yeah, it was an awesome watch. Like, this type of movie is not really my favorite thing. Like, watching humans make stupid decisions. <laughs> and, like, you know, it's like, got you, got you, got you. But I thought it was really well done. And I will say that the end gave me a payoff that was worth it. Yeah. Like, I really thought the end wrapped it up in a way where I was like, that was fun. And then above all, for me, the my favorite part, what I thought was the 
most skilled part was the dialogue. It's like yeah. Oh, yeah. for the actors to take that on and then for it to be written in that way is such an accomplishment. Like it's so much banter, which is what I like about British television and film. It's like a unique speed of banter yeah. that American film is just not like. And I love that. Like the jokes were genuinely funny and like the situation was funny and stupid, but very serious. Yeah. So I like that dichotomy of the emotion. It was emotional. Like what yeah. he said at the end. Yeah. It was emotions. To me, this is like prime Guy Ritchie. This yeah. is the Guy Ritchie that I really enjoy. And and we'll watch Snatch next. Night. Yeah. And I feel like that is like this, but like up the ante is higher. Like they up the ante with that, you know? But my favorite thing is, I think kind of what you touched upon is just there's so many characters. Yeah. But they all feel completely different. Mm -hmm. You know exactly who everyone is, what they want. Like maybe it's not very deep and that's fine. Everyone is really interesting. Like- Yeah, um, I don't think it needs to be. I agree. Yeah, like it, it didn't need to be deep. Because I don't think their lives were very deep. Like no. this was their a day in the life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it was cool like Rory was interesting I um, loved Rory Harry the Hatchet like you know exactly who they are and you don't get confused and so I, I really enjoyed that yeah once we saw all the characters I'm like oh my goodness how are we gonna follow all these characters follow all these storylines going on but as the film like progressed I was like no this is really easy to follow along and you know again these storylines just intertwine very seamlessly together and yeah, I thought it was done really well and also the actor that plays Harry I believe he was in the film Jaws 3 1983 he was uh, mm -hmm. Fitzroy's uh, companion because I was thinking where do I recognize that guy but I also gotta say too freaking Vinnie Jones he as Big Chris he was awesome yeah, that, yeah. that enforcer I mean that's a role he, he plays typically in a lot of his other films but this is one of his earlier films in 1999 because I think one of the other first films I ever saw him in was everyone's favorite Nicolas Cage film Gone in 60 Seconds another one X-Men 3 just seeing him again like in, in a film earlier on in his career I thought he was phenomenal he had a real presence on screen again in, in such a cast of characters like you really felt that threat he seemed like such a nice guy but then when he like he needed to take care of business like you don't want to mess with yeah, Chris. He's yeah. really scary. I love that about Vinny Jones. I also loved how everything wrapped up. Like yeah. there were so many moving parts and I didn't find one whole. Like I'm not really like great at like finding like the little like misconception or mistake, but I feel like that was pretty solid. Like every callback, like the guns yeah. actually being worth some, like connecting all the characters all wrapped up really nicely. And it made me miss the day where we didn't have to make movies over two hours. It moved really, really quickly. Like, I couldn't believe how fast it was. Mm -hmm. And it, it was very satisfying that everything that they showed had a payoff. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, that was that was yeah. really good. And I've only seen a few Guy Ritchie films. I've seen the first Sherlock Holmes film. I've seen Aladdin. Not the original, obviously, the Guy Ritchie one. I think this is definitely my favorite Guy Ritchie film. I mean, he directed the hell out of this movie. I loved all the performances. There was not a single week performance. And yeah. you could just see that Guy Ritchie just really like, I mean, old school young Guy, Guy Ritchie just really knew what he was doing behind the scenes. And I love, too, the cinematography in this yeah. film. There's so many different interesting shots throughout the film that I was like these are such appropriate choices for what the scene is and the context of the scene so it was again. in like sepia too I feel yeah. like right it was like, or the like color more was, warm tones yeah, yeah it was kind of yellowy yeah I like the music too it was a really cool film yeah so you guys um, if you enjoyed what you watched please don't forget to subscribe to the channel click that bell icon for all notifications and upvote this video give Steph Sabra and Andrew Gordon, a follow on their social media, and we'll Steph catch you. Steph Super Andrew the Flash Gordon. <laughs> yes. Jabby's been Jabby. here the entire time. Yes, he's been here, <laughs> just hanging out in the background. But yeah, we'll catch you next time. I'm Achara Cook. This is Steph Sabra. And Andrew Flash Gordon. Ciao!